Yeah. I'm not really sure why I bother with this rifle. Sunk a bit too much money into it now. Just going to try a few shots and see if we can get any better precision out of the Hornet this time. We have some indications on what the problem with this Hornet is. And it's not the steel. So what is the problem? It's stock fit. Now, on this pistol grip, if I put the trigger finger correctly on the trigger, there's just no way I can get hold of the grip. There's, there's nothing here. And the same with the length. And I'm in the correct position behind this stock. I have almost at least two almost three fingers between myself and the stock. So the anatomy of this stock is not made to shoot. Add that with a cartridge that isn't very precise and you basically have a non-recipe for a courtesy. If I put my Gunwerks climber behind here, you'll see the contrast to a modern rifle stock. It's just a much, much better grip. Let's get back to the two to one fireball. Now this is the Gunwerks version of my reticle only. It's more fitted for hunting and it's in MOA. <laughs> That's the usual bug hole. So, nothing really new here. Seems to shoot best with what I'm already shooting. And it's the same with the Hornet. It more or less continues to be a waste of time. Now both of these rifles are built by the same gunsmith to the same standard, but the combination of stock and cartridge makes the 2 to 1 fireball far superior to my 2 to Hornet. So this is the dead center hold you just saw. I don't treat these hash marks as MOA. I just look at them in relation to wind. So for this target, this will be a zero wind hold. This isn't a long range rifle. And because of this, I can just count the wind. And now I can just count 2 meters per second per line. So, 2 meters per second wind, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Now, when I'm shooting the birds, I'm quite often bracketing the wind, which means, okay, I'm guaranteed that this will be 4, because I'm seeing the snow drift. Sometimes, it can be as much as six. I'll just hold. Okay. It's definitely not zero. It's definitely not two. It's going to be four. Maybe even six. And I'll just hold on the edge. And I'll bracket the target between four and six. And the bird will usually be a little larger. But everything from four to seven will be okay. I'm going to hit the bird. So it's as easy as that. And here we are at 250. Each line will be one meter per second wind. So zero wind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that actually corresponds perfectly to the numbers on top. And this will be my very maximum range with this rifle. Okay, so this is the target and this is roughly 250 meters. It's the same target that we have out on 550 something and I'm not going to shoot a bird on this because you see that white spot is larger than a bird and okay I can do a two to four wind the margin for error is much less approximately 250 center hold and we have some wind from the right so I'm not going to hold center Whole edge. You see? It's as simple as that. So the rifle is, the 2 to 1 fireball is very precise. So, one of the things I'm hoping to show you with these two targets is how to deal with wind drift. And you'll see that at a closer target, you can get away with simple techniques and you're going to have a huge margin of error. 
Whereas on the longer target, it's going to be slightly more difficult and you will have some misses. And also, if you want to follow the progress step by step, you can get this notebook. I'm told you can order it anywhere you can buy a carless scope. I have no idea what it's going to cost you, because I'm seeing no money from this. And it's a superb piece of equipment, you can write really clever things in it. And it is of course designed by me. Like and subscribe! This episode contains sponsored items. Before you go, subscribe, like, and comment. Click the bell if you want notifications of new episodes. Okay, this is the first light, and I'm just breaking through the last couple of trees before I reach the big mountains. I'm out for birds with my 2 fireball and there's birds all around me, I can hear them cackling. <laughs> so now there's at least three groups of birds around me now. I'm just going to get my backpack and ski up and see if we can find uh, one of them. And I think we'll leave the cameras until we have the first bird in the backpack. So this is one of the places the bird has been feeding through the night. They come walking into the snow and they nibble, nibble what they can. Or they sit up in the trees and nibble here. Now, I have birds all around me. The problem I have with the snow and the flat light is that I have a visual range of maybe 150, 180. And they can hear me and take off at maybe 2, 250. So I'm seeing a lot of birds, but most of them are flying away from me. Now, I have one bird over there, and one bird over there, both male of the mountain ptarmigan. And they are calling and calling and calling. And there's a larger flock down there. So there's actually good numbers of birds, but they are quite restless, and they're moving all the time. So I had those at 3-400, and I just seem to be unable to close in. But anyway, enough with this frustration. So that's the 2 to 1 fireball again, perfect for this kind of environment. And it was about 100 meter, and as usual, it just bowled the bird over, it doesn't move at all. Maybe 30 centimeters. Since I'm limited by legislation, what I can use, I have to make the best of it. Take what precision I can, and get close enough to negate the wind drift. So this is the Gunwags Climber. And if you look on the internet, you'll see that it's also very strong. So these birds live in a fairly rough environment, and I'm not a very good skier. So I like to have a stock that's really solid. I'm going to fall today, tomorrow, the day after. Okay, let's ski down and fetch the bird. <coughs>
I suppose this gives you an idea why I'm a little picky about what sort of clothing I'm wearing. So we're just going to get this beautiful bird into the backpack. So what I have in the backpack isn't really any different. Mountain rescue bag, plastic bag, the birds sitting foam. Toilet paper, heat, insulation. I'm going to have a super quick lunch. Now, if I lose my mittens in this kind of weather, as you can imagine, I'm in quite a bit of trouble. So I keep spares in the backpack, but... As it is, it isn't really cold. Maybe 10 minus plus some wind. Ah, that's warm. So always keep something warm. So I keep one of the larger stainless, not because I'm going to drink it all, but might have an accident, might need a food. Ah, oh, god damn it. But all in all, quite a nice day out. We're finding the birds, we managed to get into them. And we're going to get a few in the bag. Okay. Let's just have a short break. So this is where the sitting pad comes handy. Now the trick is not to let anything blow away. So that's basically an instant shelter. So it's not like I'm expecting to be successful in this weather, but if I'm not out, I'm absolutely not. So this is a Yerevan mountain bag, and as you see, it's instant shelter. So I'm actually quite snug inside here. Okay, that's enough for today. I don't have any visibility, so I'm basically just going to go home. Protect your eyes and protect your hands. So Oh, this will hurt. Wrist warmers, they are essentials. And underneath here, I have a running jacket. 
and this prevents the snow from getting into the insulation. A normal ski glove, leather palm so I can handle warm objects, mittens, I find a large Monson inner mitten quite good. You know, you need to take the mittens on and off quite often and then just a shell mitten over. So it's nothing special really, it just, I don't know. If you want to hunt here, this is what you have to do. It's not possible to do any sort of meaningful observation, so I think this trip is over. So even when you give up, don't give up completely. I managed to get the bird despite the conditions. So not a very good shooting position in very deep snow. So I had to use the skis as not to sink down into the snow. And as usual, I always move with an empty chamber. It can be quite difficult to get the tape to work in the cold, but Gorilla Tape seems to be okay. There she is. So the bird was shot here and it tumbled down there. Usual, the lapa bullet just bolts the birds over. It's the 55 grain full metal jacket and it's specially made for shooting birds. Leaves the carcass very clean. That's the benefit of the Scandinavian full metal jacket bullets. They are made for shooting game birds. Someone on a snowmobile. Just get her into the bag and I'll go home for real this time. Now I know that was a gruesome image to show you, but it illustrates why I'm using the 2 to 1 fireball. Now, for this hunt, due legal matters, the only two centerfires I can use is 2 to 1 fireball and 2 to hornet. Whereas the terminal effect is approximately the same, I don't think there's any way I can match that precision with a 2 to hornet. Now, the majority of the competence on the 2 to 1 fireball resides in Sweden due to the legislation. Now, the tip I was given is that you try with a 52 grain match bullet and find your precision there. Then you switch to either the Lapua or the Saco bullets and you take the one that shoots the best. Now, if you don't give up, you're going to get results. So, by edging in between the trees, I managed to find a group and get another bird for the day. Which is good, we have approximately 
30 minutes of light left. So I basically ski all the way into my fighting position. If I stop too soon, I'll just get stuck in heavy snow. Yeah, snow. It's one thing about these Swarovski covers, they seem to pop up a lot, which means that the lens is also filled with snow. Not too happy about that. This was actually quite a tricky shot because the bird was behind all those trees. So I had to find a keyhole and thread the bullet through. There it is. Okay, that's enough scenery I think, let's give you a rundown on how to dress. See more on that, you'll have to check in on my OnlyFans. Subscribe to the THLR channel by clicking the left logo icon so you'll be shooting straighter than a drunk skunk before the sun shines over northern Norway.